2006 School of Policy, Planning, and Development commencement. I am Carol Rush, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Please rise and welcome the class of 2006. The procession is now entering our venue. The procession is led by flag bearers Sakina Khan, our undergraduate valedictorian, and William Barcelona, a Master of Health Administration graduate. Following the flag bearers are the faculty, led by Dean Jack Knott. The graduates are following. On the left-hand side of the center aisle are the bachelor students in planning and development and public policy, management, and planning. Following them are the Master of Real Estate Development students, then the Master of Public Policy students. On the right-hand side of the center aisle are the doctoral students, the Doctor of Philosophy in Planning, Doctor of Philosophy in Public Administration, followed by students earning our professional doctorate, the Doctor of Planning and Development Studies, and the Doctor of Public Administration. They are followed by the Master of International Public Policy and Management students, Master of Health Administration students, and Executive Master of Health Administration, then Master of Planning, and finally Master of Public Administration.
like to welcome everyone to the School of Policy, Planning, and Development 2006 graduation. I'm Dean Jack Knott, uh, Dean of the School, and uh, welcome all the parents, all the relatives and friends of the students who are graduating, and a hearty congratulations to all the students. Can we all be seated, please? This day marks an important end to this part of the graduates' education and a wonderful beginning to the next phase of their life and career. This is a great time to savor and celebrate this significant achievement. I also thank to all the parents, friends, and relatives who helped in many ways to make this day possible through financial assistance. I learned it was uh, 41,000 a year from the mayor today. Encouragement, love, and care. He also said it was a very good investment. You share in this ceremony and record of accomplishment. I think you should be especially proud of graduating from the School of Policy Planning and Development. It is one of the most distinctive and premier schools of its kind in the country. And I'd like to talk a few moments about the kind of endowment that we feel the students have achieved by graduating from our school. And I'd like to talk about three elements to that endowment that we expect the students to build upon, invest in, and do great things. One element of that endowment is excellence. We are a premier school in the nation. We're ranked number six by US News and World Report among public affairs schools, and some of our programs are even ranked three or four in the nation. The outstanding quality of all our students, as for example, indicated by the American Planning Association Award given this month for our students' report on the Katrina disaster, shows the quality that we have in our students. The many awards and other recognitions given to our faculty, including teaching awards, significant publications, and this year, $17 million in externally funded grant re research projects. I didn't know there was a win. Thanks. We also have one of the most distinguished public administration programs in the country, which was started about 50 years ago at the time that the Maxwell School at Syracuse University was started, which is the number one program. We have 10 research centers. We have the first US federally funded Center on Homeland Security called CREATE, the Tomas Rivera Policy Institute, the Metran Center on Urban Transportation, the Lusk Center for Real Estate, the new John Bedrosian Center on Governance, and the Center on Philanthropy and Public Policy and others. While this is impressive in itself, what makes us really a premier school in the country is our distinctive character. And I'd like to say a little bit about what makes SPPD and SPPD graduates really distinctive. First, we are a leader in the nation in, inter in interdisciplinary studies. We pride ourselves in being able to combine disciplines and to solve problems, not just from a narrow perspective, but from the problem and solution perspective. We are leading the nation in applied learning through residencies, internships, and the involvement of practicing professionals in the education of students. We have a wonderful cadre of adjunct faculty from various professional fields who contribute a great deal of time to the education of SBPD students. We also are leading the nation in education that emphasizes collaboration across the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. Most of the kinds of problems we face today are not going to be solved by government by itself or by business by itself or the nonprofit sector by itself. It's going to require collaboration, working together, 
and we lead the nation in that kind of study. We also lead the nation in studies of innovative governance through focus on privatization, contracting, organizational networks, and other advanced ways of providing service. And finally, finally, we are a leader in the nation in global studies. We are connected around the world with an alumni in many countries, with joint programs and research projects in other countries, and opportunities for our students to engage in international teaching labs. This year, we are doing labs in Beijing and in Rio de Janeiro, and in London, England, which gives our students a global perspective. We are one of the few schools that can teach future state and local public leaders about land use, housing, and transportation, the main issues of their future jobs, and teach future leaders in real estate about urban planning, community development, and policy, things they need to know in order to succeed. We are also teach future leaders in healthcare about the state-of-the-art management of hospitals and clinics, as well as working with community leaders about the healthcare needs of their neighborhoods. We are thus one of the premier schools in the country educating leaders and producing knowledge to serve the public good for the 21st century. And our graduates represent this kind of outstanding excellence. But to be truly great, our graduates, faculty, and staff also need something special beyond being premier and being distinctive. Something less tangible, tangible that embodies human values and relationships. I believe that SPPD provides that kind of special experience, which is one main reason I decided to join SPPD last fall, leaving the University of Illinois to become dean. This special experience has the following three features which give you, our graduates, a valuable element to your endowment for the next phase of your lives and careers. First, education is not just about information and knowledge, but equally about personal character. Edmund Hillary, the first person to scale Mount Everest, said, it is not the mountains we conquer, but ourselves. Over these years of study and work, hopefully you have developed a set of basic values, commitment to goals, discipline, courage, and maturity. And as Ralph Waldo Emerson stated it, what lies behind us and what lies before us are trivial compared to what lies within us. And that's a value that we hold here at USC and SPPD. We are interested in character as well as distinctiveness and excellence. Second, do not focus on becoming successful, but on making a difference in something you care about. Some political leaders run for office to gain power, but have no idea of how to make society better. Some business leaders develop companies to make money with no sense of obligation to employees and shareholders or benefits to society. We educate students to strive to make a difference for the public and common good. In politics, we teach students about public policy and the benefits of policy for the poor, the environment, energy, or economic development. In business, our graduates should care about making a product that benefits customers and care about running an organization that performs well and treats its employees with respect and dig dignity. As Albert Einstein put it, try not to become a person of success, but try rather to become a person of value. Success will follow, not lead, efforts to accomplish something worthwhile. Third, we are a school that values integrity and truth. We are a school that teaches about different ideas from the Republicans and the Democrats, but we fundamentally value the truth, the research, the facts, 
and the inquisitiveness that comes with study and analytic work. And we hope that we have instilled in our students this kind of inquisitiveness, this kind of yearning for what the truth is, this kind of expectation that we want to get to the facts, that we want to do the right thing. Albert Einstein emphasized that the important thing is to not to stop questioning. And that's the way we would like to see our graduates. And that's one of the elements of the endowment we want to give our graduates, that they remain questioners their whole lives. So graduates of SPPD, you have outstanding excellence as you go forward. You have a very distinctive intellectual capital that should prefer prepare you for governance in the 21st century. And you have been exposed and experienced among our faculty, staff, and other students a moral character that is well trained to have you focus on the public good with respect and dignity for all. Finally, you are joining a lifelong USC Trojan family. With its extensive network of graduates here in Los Angeles and worldwide, like any family, it cares about its members. It looks after them. It pays attention to them. It shows up. And you'll discover that the Trojan family is a real family and will be your family for the rest of your lives. This family includes such graduates as David Jansen, CEO of Los Angeles County, Bud Overham, head of economic development for Mayor Villaragosa, Vekti Gonal, Minister of Defense in Turkey, Dr. Ricardo Acosta Suarez, Director General for the Ministry of Science and Technology in Mexico, Adam Herbert, Herbert the President of Indiana University, and the list goes on. Each of you has unlimited potential and tremendous opportunity build upon the intellectual capital you have acquired, build upon the excellence that you have studied, and the moral character you have developed here at SVPD, and go forward and accomplish great things. The faculty and staff at the School of Policy Planning and Development once again heartily congratulate you on your graduation. Thank you for spending these precious few years with us and wish you all the best for the future. And now I would like to introduce uh, Sakina Khan, our undergraduate speaker. Representing undergraduates, Sakina Khan, a public policy management and planning student, received the highest GPA, 3.93, and is SPPD's 2006 valedictorian and recipient of the Etzioni Bianchi Memorial Community Service Award. Sakina entered USC as a freshman in fall 2002 and was awarded USC's highest award, the Trustee Scholarship. At USC, she has distinguished herself as a leader. She has been a recreation leader for the Community Center of Santa Clarita, program assistant with USC's Joint Educational Project, Women's Human Rights Intern with Amnesty International, and a Getty Multicultural Intern with the Community Arts Partnership. She has been a publicity chair with the USC Redi Residential Housing Building Government moderator for the Boys and Girls Club Digital Arts Network, and a research assistant with the California Juvenile Justice Accountability Project. She is interested in human rights and education and plans to continue her education next fall in law school. What a record. Welcome, Sakina Khan. Surrounded by our family and friends to 
celebrate one of the greatest achievements of our lives. In our midst, we have activists, athletes, and professionals. Students who have balanced career, family, and academics and still remain active throughout the USC community. We are graduating from university that has been a cornerstone of the city since 1880. USC is a school built upon the traditions of the past, and we are now another class that's about to make its mark. We've all become familiar with USC's traditions over our years here. And one of our most storied legacies is the crosstown rivalry between USC and UCLA. In my family, this rivalry is a little more personal. I obviously attend UCLA, USC. Um, <laughs> I attend USC, and my younger sister Ollie is affected and went to UCLA. So, although we joke around and it doesn't get too personal, the clear winner in this case is my youngest sister, Sabia. She knows I really don't want another Bruin in the family, so I've had to spend a lot of time and money pampering her with USC gear and taking her to games. So, what an unexpected upside of this rivalry, though, is that I've had the chance to think about what sets USC apart from other schools, especially UCLA. I've known all along that USC is one of the nation's premier universities. The qualifications of our incoming students continue to soar, and the university has only become more selective and more competitive. Students are pushed to study diverse fields and to take advantage of the benefits of the USC community. Our athletics, our dedication to community service, and that undeniable Trojan spirit has made us one of the best universities in the nation to attend for a memorable and rewarding college experience. For many of us, though, our USC experience has been a little different from the average student. We're a new school launched in 1998 when the schools of public administration and urban planning development were merged. I was primarily attracted to the School of Policy, Planning, Development because in my mind, I felt like we had the best of both worlds. We have the advantage of being a small school in the middle of a large and dynamic university. Still, when I tell people that my major is public policy, management, and planning, the next sentence is usually, huh, what's that? These past four years, I've had a lot of time to figure out what those words mean. And I think I've concluded that quite simply, we are the people who fix the society that we live in. We solve the problems, we write the rules, and we design the future of our communities. While people complain about politici politicians, or traffic, or bureaucracy, we are the people who have gained the skills necessary to find the solutions. So for us, the future is bright, and we're about to open the door to a huge array of possibilities. I've heard my professors say in numerous classes, and we heard Professor Sam Phil say earlier, that we can expect to make an average of four career changes in our lifetimes now. So we are fortunate because our school has trained us in a wide array of fields, policy, planning, development, and management. And we have had the added advantage of actual work experience through our internships. So many people leave their undergraduate career with a degree, but no idea how to conduct themselves in a work environment. But we have the opportunity to prepare ourselves. And we're lucky because not everyone else, even within our own university, has had that same chance. We learned how to effectively create change wherever we are, in a city planning office, the State Assembly, a law firm, or Washington, D.C. So our university and our school have given us so many opportunities and advantages. What can we give them back in return? Well, the Trojan family is renowned for its connections and its camaraderie. We should embrace these traditions, too. When we graduate, we'll be Trojans, but we'll also be alumni of the School of Policy, Planning, and Development. It's up to us to embrace these opportunities that we have been given. We must establish ourselves and work towards our goals while remembering those who helped us reach them. The PPD Trojan family is only as strong as its members, so it's our responsibility to make sure that we help our school remain a strong and vibrant part of the university for generations to come. Thank you to the family and the friends who've come to support the class of 2006 today. We couldn't be here without your support. And to the class of 2006, let us strive for the qualities of the ideal Trojan. Faithful, scholarly, skillful, courageous, and ambitious. Good luck in the future, and congratulations on your achievements. Thank you, Sabina. I'd like to now introduce William Barcelona, our master speaker. William Barcelona will receive the Masters of Health Administration today. Bill has 20 years experience as an attorney and has an undergraduate degree in public administration. 
In 2001, he quit his law partnership and embarked on a career in health administration with the newly formed Cal California Department of Managed Healthcare. He spent four years at the DMHC where he worked as the deputy director among other positions. Currently, Bill works for the California Association of Physician Groups as the Vice President of Government Affairs, where he has opened the Startup Government Affairs Program for this trade organization of over 150 medical groups and 59,000 physicians. Since he began his association with USC in 2002, his career path and academic life have been constantly interwoven. He has been a mentor and provider and has provided career opportunities to fellow students. In 2005, he facilitated bringing the senior leadership of the Department of Managed Care to USC for a strategic planning retreat. Later that year, he facilitated a similar program at USC with the California Association of Physician Groups. Bill has worked at the epicenter of some of the most controversial issues in managed care during the past few years. Please welcome Bill Barcelona. Oh, that's a big crowd. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Nutt. I want to start by congratulating all of you today, whether you are a student or a member of the family or friends. This is our day. It, feel goes, it feels good to end one chapter and to look forward to beginning a new one. And I want to thank our faculty for encouraging us and mentoring us along the way. I came to USC at the ripe old age of 43. I came to this program to learn something about management, something about health care. I had a great time. And along the way, I came to respect my professors greatly who helped me along the way. Ivana, Rich, Bob, and Chet Newland meant so much to me. My favorite author, Tom Robbins, ended his third novel with the statement, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. <laughs> I knew you'd like that, Rich. <laughs> Dean not told you that I've worked as a lawyer for the past 20 years. After I left the service of the forces of darkness, <laughs> I joined the California Department of Managed Healthcare, the DMHC in Sacramento. I had the privilege to work for a terrific woman, Cindy Enos, who is their director. Cindy lost her hand at the age of 19 when she was a freshman at Ohio State. She had to drop out of school, rehabilitate herself, and then work her way back through college which she did, gaining honors. Later, in her early 50s, she suffered breast cancer, fought that battle and won as well. Cindy's now the director of the second largest regulator of HMOs in the nation, watching over 22 million people. She has a tough job, but a tremendous spirit. And Cindy always encouraged me to pursue this program. And because of that, Three other students in the program have now come through DMHC as well. And I say this because whatever age you are, you can always use a mentor in your life and your career. And Cindy was certainly that for me. Now I want to talk about two things today, government and health care. What we do about health care in this state over the next 10 or 20 years will affect all of our futures, whether you consume it or buy it or try to plan for it if you work in government. The state of our society's health has an impact on all of us. It determines whether we will have a productive society or not. California has some distinct advantages going for it in the healthcare arena that you may not know about. California has had the lowest healthcare premiums in the nation for the past 10 years. That means that more of us were able to obtain coverage because it was more affordable. I recently heard the CEO of HealthNet, one of the largest health plans in the state, say that everything in California costs more. Houses cost more, gas costs more. But Steve Lynch noted, however, that in California, healthcare costs less. Why is that? Well, 
California adopted the HMO movement to a greater degree than other states back in the 1990s. But California did something else. It developed an infrastructure of large organized medical groups, like Kaiser Permanente, which has over 9,500 doctors, or systems like Sutter Health in the north part of the state. Proudly not for profit. <laughs> or UCLA Medical Group here in the south, or Healthcare Partners. These groups have thousands of doctors in each of them. They use electronic health records, and they employ systems thinking in the approach to rendering health care, and they seek to master best practices. There was a study published in 2000 by the Institute of Medicine called Crossing the Quality Chasm. See, I was paying attention, Lavana. <laughs> it was a think tank report by a blue ribbon panel that looked at how medicine should evolve in the 21st century. You know what they said? They found that in one out of every two procedures, a doctor will perform it differently. At least 40% of all treatment rendered in America is either wrong, unnecessary, or improper. This variation leads to waste, duplicate tests, lost records, boxed procedures. You've all experienced it. This is why we pay twice as much for health care in America per capita than any other first world country, and why we end up with the lowest life expectancy in the industrialized world. So how do we fix that? The think tank concluded that systems of care were necessary to move medicine forward, to provide more safety and better quality to patients. A medical group executive put it this way, when you get sick and need a doctor, you call your friends and ask around. You get a second-hand advice about doctors. You really don't know much about them, and you have a hard time figuring out how to decide, how to pick one of them. This system is indecipherable. You can't judge the quality within it. Now compare that to when you go to the airport. When you go to the airport, do you walk around asking people who they would recommend to fly you to Dallas? Do you check the flight record of the pilot on your Southwest Airlines flight before you buy your ticket and climb aboard? No. You see, the airline system is different because it's a true system. You realize as a passenger that each pilot is trained to fly the plane from point A to point B in the correct way. You have a government regulator, the FAA, that routinely checks for safety and you have an airline industry that acts to instill quality into every step of the process. As a passenger, you have confidence that each flight is flown the same way and that the outcome is reasonably predictable. Many people get on an airplane and don't even give it a second thought. That's how medicine has to evolve. Doctors have to start practicing in a way that is more predictable and more accountable. That's where California leads the way. Our infrastructure of large, organized provider groups is developing into that kind of a system. This is how we will help keep costs under control, improve on safety, and eventually make the system more transparent for patients. And government can help in many ways. It can continue to encourage the development of this system. Or to put it in the negative, it can refrain from interfering with that development. Government can do things such as incenting the widespread adoption of health information technology, including an interoperable network of electronic health records that can be used anywhere, anytime when needed. How we think and act about healthcare says a lot about who we are as a society. Will we devise a system that provides healthcare for everyone? Or will we limit access to this system to only the middle and upper classes? This debate will continue to unfold over the next 24 months as we progress toward the 2008 general election, when two opposing forces in California will run competing ballot initiatives. On one side, they will propose a universal health care system run by the government as a single payer for all services. The other will propose a private system that has hallmarks of the individual mandate just adopted in Massachusetts, and a limited employer mandate and expanded eligibility for government-run programs like Medi-Cal. So think about health care over the next 12 months and decide how you want the future to unfold. Take part in the debate and be well. It's been an honor and a privilege to be a part of this program at USC. I've come to know a number of you out there today and form friendships with you and working relationships that will continue for years. I want to close with a familiar benediction. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields until we meet again. Until we meet again, may God hold you 
May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Fight on. Thank you, Bill. I seem to be taller than uh, all the other speakers. I'd now like to introduce our doctoral speaker, Carol Armstrong. Carol Armstrong will receive the Doctor of Philosophy in Planning today. Carol's research and teaching interests are in environmental studies, sustainability, international development. These interests led her to a dissertation entitled The Social Construction of Brownfields. Since joining the PhD program, Carol has held a number of research and teaching positions. She has authored a number of papers and articles, including Small Businesses as Culprits and Clients, a Comparison of Brownfield Redevelopment in Los Angeles and Kuala Lumpur for the U.S. Small Business Administration Office of Advocacy, Eco-Industrial Redevelopment of Los Angeles Brownfields, presented at Brownfields 2002 in Cadiz, Spain, and the Social Construction of Brownfields, presented at the 2005 Association of European Schools of Planning Congress in Vienna, Austria. She has taught SPPD's internship seminar and worked as a teaching assistant for undergraduate's Third World Cities course. Currently, she is working as an environmental specialist with the City of Los Angeles Department of Public Works Bureau of Engineering where she manages the environmental clearance processes of city capital projects. Please welcome Carol Armstrong. Thank you, Dean Knott. Congratulations, graduates! Congratulations also to our families, our friends, of course our professors, the staff at SPPD, and the alumni who helped us to make it here. I'm here to speak from the perspective of a doctoral student, one who likes it at USC so much that I've stuck around for seven years. I mention this number because there were times when I wondered if completing my PhD was worth it, if the time and the money and the effort invested were too much for me. I was writing the answers to my qualifying exam in early September 2001. After the tragic events in New York and Washington, D.C., where I'm from, I felt like the world was falling apart around me and that I was helpless to do anything about it, that my chosen path lacked meaning. I thought that all the time that I was spending with my books and my writing was causing me to miss out on the real world. Fortunately, as I stand here today, looking back on my seven years, I am certain that this did not prove to be true. Here at SPPD, because we are a professional school in one of the most dynamic cities in the world, we are able to connect our scholarly research with real urban challenges. And as we all know, new challenges arise in our cities every day. I feel lucky to say that I have benefited from a number of SPPD opportunities, ones that have enriched both my academic and my professional experiences. I visited Malaysia with Professor Hakula's Urban Planning Lab class, where we studied the revitalization of the Malacca River, the center of one of the world's oldest trading ports and a United Nations heritage site. We were then able to share our findings with local officials and scholars. I visited the Rhine Ruhr region of Germany with Professor Banerjee's class. There we examined how the European Union is helping that country to undertake a massive effort to clean up and reuse former industrial lands in 11 Rust Belt cities. Through the Sustainable Cities program here at USC, I was able to work with faculty and students across campus on projects that examined urban environmental problems. In one case, I spent a month living in Tijuana, Mexico, researching the local environmental movement that had organized in response to the polluting behavior of Macchiadoro border factories. These experiences not only provided me with a dissertation topic, but with life lessons that I will never forget. I know that I'm not unique in this. One of my classmates, who could not be here with us today, but she's a graduate this year, Heron Shin, completed a very compelling dissertation on the culture of poverty among Korean immigrant women in the United States. She is now teaching at University College London. 
Another of today's graduates, Judy Steele, who is here today, has produced research on disaster response and recovery that has provided assistance as far away as Kobe, Japan. Other doctoral students have been fundamental in supporting Professor Cooper and Professor Musso's civic engagement initiative. Together they have helped foster the creation of Los Angeles' newest form of governance, the Neighborhood Council System. And Professor Dallin Myers has encouraged our doctoral students to think about the future through his Population Dynamics Research Group. Their work has provided reinforcement for what we have heard voiced in the immigration marches of these past few weeks. Today we march, tomorrow we vote. And Professor Niraj Verma, my very patient advisor, has the, directed the creation of our school's new merged PhD program. This is the first of its kind in the nation. It's distinctive in its commitment to deepening the understanding of place-based strategies at the intersections of planning, governance, public management, policy, and development. The program has already been recognized with over half a million dollars in initial support and will continue its success by hosting a doctoral student conference here next month. Governance, place, and community in a globalizing world. And I hope a lot of you masters and undergraduate students will consider applying in the future. I highlight these successes because this is a day of celebration, but because it is also one of reflection. And as I finally come to understand, graduation is also an important time to let go and to move on. As students, we have learned that even though we sometimes feel overwhelmed by expectations and pressure, we have to just do the best that we can and then move on. This reminds me of advice from my dad, who said, stop trying to be perfect. No one dissertation solved all the world's problems. Just get it done and get on with the world's work. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. So, fellow graduates, today the world needs us as much as ever, and our academic achievement makes us ever more responsible for the future. As former President William Jefferson Clinton once said, the future is not an inheritance. It is an opportunity and an obligation. We are obligated to question ourselves and our society, and we are obligated to find answers, even if they are ugly, because only then can we move forward in freedom. These are the kinds of questions that concern us in policy planning and development every day. For instance, if we don't believe and trust in our own government, how can we encourage others to adopt our model of democracy? If we turn our country into a gated community in the name of homeland security, how do we expect to encourage the growth of global civil society? If we cannot help our own people when they are in crisis, how can we lead internationally? If we don't have faith in our leaders, how can we encourage others to succeed them? Lastly, if we deny the freedom of others, how can we claim it for ourselves? No matter what your answers may be to these questions, I urge you to keep the conversation going. Whether your career takes you into academia, government, the private sector, or somewhere in between, please keep the conversation going. The School of Policy Planning and Development has prepared us well for this task. Let us take this experience, seize our opportunities, and fulfill our obligations to make things better. Freedom cannot survive in silence, and for us, apathy is not an option. Thank you all for helping us to get to this moment of accomplishment and celebration. Graduates, let us remember our years here fondly and continue to connect with USC in the future. And when we find ourselves in the face of adversity, may we remember us to always, always fight on. Thank you. Uh, note that our new PhD program in policy planning and development requires uh, a graduate record examination in order to be admitted and uh, we have the highest average score on the GRE of any PhD program at the University of Southern California. <laughs> In that regard, I want to echo the thanks to uh, Professor Naraj Verma for his work uh, with many other faculty and the school in developing this outstanding program.
Yesterday, I'm going to move this up again. <laughs> Yesterday, we had our award ceremony to honor those students who had achieved academic excellence. It was a wonderful ceremony that was held in Lewis Hall. I would like to ask the award recipients now to stand, if you would, please. And give them a round of applause. The diplomas will now be handed out. We will begin with the doctoral students, followed by our master's students, and conclude with our undergraduate students. Senior Associate Dean Elizabeth Grady and Professor Daniel Masmanian, will you please come to the podium at this time? Dean Knott. I am pleased to present to you the candidates for the Doctorate of Philosophy in Planning. Althea Tumactor Abuyan. Imani Brown. Doctor of Public Administration. Carol Ackerson. <laughs> Let's give a big round of applause to the doctoral graduates. Not, I now present to you the candidates for the Master of International Public Policy and Management. Chung Jenny Lau. Daniel Chin. 
Chong Hong Lee. Wei Kai. Zhou Feng Li. Hini Chung. Hei Yu Lin. Alice Sin. Wu Ling Chang. Yi Jin Ingrid Chu. Chung Ying Lu. Kang Ni Chu. Ya Pei Chung. Yun Lin Chu. White Bear Liu. Annie Chen. Xiao Xin Huang. Xin Wen Tai. Yu Fang Chen. Chang Xiu Lin. Vincent Mitsuharu Okada. Takako Takahashi. Morbid Nakshine. Mitsuho Seita. Rusuke Kuike. Kenneth Damapong. <laughs> Ruichiro Ura. <laughs> Alec Wan. <laughs> Yihong Tong. Stephen Pearl McCarthy Sneed. <laughs> Chen Yu Kuang. No, Chu Hua Chen. <laughs> Min Cheng Xu. <laughs> Ying Chen. Deto Orihara. <laughs> Bei Hu. <laughs> and Takashi Igao. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause to the I can grab. I now present to you our first candidate in our newest Executive Master of Health Administration program. Gino Patrizio. to you the candidates for the Masters in Health Administration. Ellen Marie Badley. William Barcelona.
Danielle Deshay Reno. Claudia Edith Chris. Corinne Jackson. Shane Matthew Thelman. Esther Chavez. Sogo Chucky. Courtney Chanel Mitchell. Alejandra Lave. Eresha Fernando. Adam Davis Blue. Suzanne Wu. Gurvinder Kaur. Rajat Dameja. Hong Yang. Ying Hong Huang. Shooting Tina Chang. Samantha Leah Coffin. Simran Sani. Prueb Singh Karan. Elham Safi. Ronisha, well done. Angela Baca. Misty Pacheco. Ray Hahn. Melba Denise Donald. Eric Anthony Braun. Let's give a huge round of applause for the EMHA and MHA. Dean Nod, I now present to you the candidates for the Master of Planning and Master of Planning and Development Studies. Todd Philip McIntyre. Kevin Akoshi Azumi. David Newbecker. Jason Masters. James Maxwell Tampi. Carl Frank Alameda. Amy Gabriella Lazarga. Marissa Kirsten Christine Aho. Josh Michael Romer. Lesanu Hamalu McMorrow. Philip Henry Grove II. Vivek Sai. Ian Rikus Trivers. Sabira Alu. Katrina Helena Svalde. Vanessa Ann Luna. Kristen Elizabeth Jacobson. Amy Elizabeth Ahomar. Sobera Hang. 
Matthew Phillips Levy. Dana Kathleen Ray. Stephen Terry Presswood. James Derek Allen. Todd Emerson Hutchins. Mandeep Kaur Samra. Monica Jane. Melinda May Gayer. Virginia Patricia Gomez Tapia Lazar. Marla Felicia Alvarez. Selena Buyan Bune. Cecilia Jung Kim. Jiong Song. Yongkong Kim. Jahe Choi. Sean Cook. Kyung Kim. Xiao Fun Lee. Yi Lu. Yanyang Li. Shepu Nora Che. Li Wu. Zhong Ping Shu. Sisu Shu. Let's get a big round of applause for the MPL graduates. Dean Nod, I now present to you the candidates for the Master of Public Administration. Robert Adam Caspian. <laughs> Bellini Megan Minnes. Florence Kital Cabadal. Ronnie Brian Zapeta. <laughs> Natasha Adimi. Noah Joel Berkowitz. Oliver Chi. Alejandra Maraganis. Brianna Lane Swartz. Malgrazata Schumanska. Rebecca Emily Garrison. Miriam Carolyn Pullman. Sonia Astrid Solon. Russell William Wright. Adeteo Aboke. Russ Marshall Kwan. Jason Masters. James Maxwell Tampkin. 
Juan Perla. David Zandueta. Yeah. Keon Lamar Montgomery. Sharmita Saha. Jean Wen. Lourdes Ferrer. Giselle Therese Mathis. Hugo Maldonado. Darla Jolene Fletcher. Jason Arthur Weiner. Cheryl Jade Fung Wang. Nina Ardalon. Bradley David Olin. James Lawrence Schifani. Rosaline Ann Zoster. Somaya Chitawala. Vera A. Orla. Sarah Maddie. Diana Wu. Rowena Magana. Sarah Palacios. Tyreen Ann Jatalaka. David Kim. Monica Ann Martinez. Clarice Ann Young. Ryan Gordon Gustafson. Tanya Kleinman. Kathleen Klein Fullerton. Cynthia Patricia Reed. Manuel Carmona. Nathan Dietrich. Doriana Diana Johnson. Daniel Edward Buffalo. Syrian Villa Vicencio. Kelly Midgley. Julia Nicole McGinnis. Crystal Mary Elizabeth Chase. Edgar S. Zasuega. Carolyn Elise Jenna. Shant Apikia. Lisa Lee. Ivy Hu. Kathy Bang. Jessica Ye. Luan Pan. Tehong Choi.
Keisuke Masachika. Yes, but they... Yang Yang Lu. Tessuro Iguchi. Let's get a big round of applause for the graduates of the MPA program. present to you the candidates for the Master of Public Policy. Angelo Reyes. Frank Garcia Robles. Jong Kim. Foster Kerrison. Daniel Krim. Tomokazo Kitamura. Gilberto Martinez. Tomohiro Kamiya. Shinosuke Kamiyama. Ashley Allison Rudman. Andre Michael Surrett. <laughs> Brisa Carmen Sotelo. <laughs> Araceli Simeon Luna. Francisca Gabriela Ferrer. <laughs> Jennifer Lee Cohen. <laughs> Nisha Una. <laughs> Rupesh Hazra. Justin Lynn Parker. <laughs> Julie Alana Crane. <laughs> Dahlia Polychronis. <laughs> Ryan Dean Bonnet. Ruben Alonzo. David Lee. Preeti Johari. Elise Jenai Kelly. Annie Chang. Anna Han Nam. Nancy Sho. Ellen Lorene Shao. Dustin Joseph Xiao. Quinn T. Ryan. Oh, 
Brittany Eric Weissman. Andrea Helm Chalmers. Jacqueline Ann Panning. Jennifer Bravo Grizzard. Lisa Marie Schimmel. Douglas A. Tripp. Marissa Lynn Crater. Danielle Shren Pachtemai. Elizabeth Chung. Virginia Lillen Bella. Let's get a big round of applause for the MPP graduates. Ishit 
Sita Takra. <laughs> Tina Lynn. Danielle Molazan. Rosemary Evelyn Olson. Cara Mulio. Nairi Sadijan. Neil Dean O'Connor. John Schaefer. Jeffrey Lawrence Aaron Price. Jack Lee. Leslie Katsumi Tanaka. Vache William Avenisian. Yeah. All right. Thomas Lee. <laughs> Catherine Marie Sampson. Amanda Christine Fonny. Jennifer Dubay Evans. And Jeff C. Gilpatrick. Let's get a huge round of applause for the real estate development graduates. pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Planning and Development, the Bachelor of Science in Public Policy and Management, and the Bachelor of Science in Public Policy, Management, and Planning. Please stand. Chase Thomas Newen Brewer. Susan Reyes. Ivan Beard. Janice Scott. Sandra Lynn Poop. Carl Miller. Adrian Gail Beanie. Daniel Stephen Weber. Lindsay Marie Hill. William Bartness Scott. Christopher Michael Krellin. Derek Stephen Desert II. Kathleen Ozoski. Courtney Ann Jacobs. Cameron Ann Miller. Kurt A. Katnick. Christopher Mark 
Doyle. Danny Kathleen Ray. Virginia Patricia Gomez Tapia Lozano. Nick Todd Healy. Claire Therese Shonsby. Rachel D. Hannon. Perinian Brenneman Slay. The Heis owns that until you're done. Jenna Khalil Kachor. Kathy Lowe. Yomiko Ata. Michael A. Gilbranian. Arjuna Milan. Claudia Lopez. Brian Allen Barr. Mohammed M. Dakil. Sarah Jawed. William Michael Stiefvater. Michael Joseph Zera. Cameron Matthew Rados. Michael Anthony Minetti. Ronnie Villarreal. Oscar Lua. Jonathan Champa. Kirk Alexander Shepard. William R. Jacobs. Joyce Chen. Rafael Gutierrez. Jacob Shimano. Ashley Molina. Wesley Byron Holland. Jairo Umana. Lauren Nicole Sumi. Natalie Elizabeth Larman. <laughs> Ramsey Taylor Milley. <laughs> John Gunther Herring. <laughs> Munchol Shin. Luan Ramsey. Roger Wesley Hernandez. William Roland Smith. Markham Casey Caldwell. Christian Marquis. 
Christopher D. Trout. Laura Boyson George. William Thomas Bernard King. Thomas S. Ledford. Jennifer Patrice Hood. Alana M. Pitts. Jennifer Christine Belknap. Elizabeth Grace Doctor. We have a, uh, a special guest here. Member of the Board of Trustees, Suzanne Johnson, is giving her goddaughter, Jenna Belknap, her diploma. Thank you. Katherine Eleanor Lemon. Austin Coleman. Shweta Sharma. Jennifer Camus. David Anthony Garza. Billy Young. Andrew Victor Bucharski. Stephanie Schwartz. Blake Huntington Tippett. Michael J. Condon. Jonathan Chesner. I just want to say thanks to Faye. Faye rocks, that right? Sandy's got a cool too. Brady Daniel O'Connell. John Meek. Scott Cameron Botsford. <laughs> Ali Siam. <laughs> Virginia Grace Powell. Rosalie Dayan. Justin Rowe Tolliver. Todd Yo! Justin Hutchins. James Derek Allen. Sakina Khan. All right, get loud. Give a huge round of applause for the graduates.
I'd like to uh, invite Karen Steller, MPA alumna and president of the SPPD Alumni Association to the podium. Karen. Congratulations on completing your degree at the School of Policy, Planning, and Development. And congratulations to family members way back there who have experienced this educational accomplishment themselves. As this year's chair of the board, it's my honor to welcome you to the SPPD Alumni Association. Graduating from the school automatically enrolls you uh, into the Alumni Association. And as we've all heard today, and I'm sure you've heard in your years here, the saying, the Trojan family. Some of you no doubt scoffed at the idea when you were first enrolling in your program here. Hopefully, by now, you've come to realize there really is a Trojan family and that we care about and care for each other. This does not end upon your graduation. Rather, you will discover this is a lifelong and family experience. And unlike your real family, you chose this one. I hope to see you at the events we are planning this year, including the first SPPD Alumni Awards Dinner in the fall, where we will be honoring three very prominent alumni from our program, homecoming, and the welcoming event on Tuesday, May 16th. It'll be held on the first floor of Lewis Hall, and knowing how much tuition is, you'll be pleased to learn that the event is free. Participating is not only fun, but can be helpful to your career and to your own personal and professional growth. Many of you have benefited from being mentees. Now is your opportunity and obligation to be a mentor. Alumni from our program are around the world working as professionals in fields as diverse as our programs. We have a global alumni base that number 10,000 in 38 countries. Spending time with such an interesting and diverse group of alumni is why I stay involved. I hope you do too. Once again, welcome to the SPPD Alumni Association and the lifelong Trojan family. Thank you, Karen. Will everyone please stand? To the faculty and staff, proud parents, relatives and friends, I proudly present to you the School of Policy, Planning and Development, Class of 2006. You may now move your tassels to the other side of your cap. Congratulations and good luck.